Well, 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 well. It's looking to shape up to be a pretty good day as far as a green day, and uh, I couldn't be happier because I think we deserve it after <laughs> this, this market's really been kicking us in the teeth. But uh, today is looking pretty good. I'm going to try to keep this, this stream pretty short because in all honesty, everything that um, we really want to talk about, we talked today over at NFA Live with, uh, with Guy and Ben. And we went over a plethora of different things. We talked about why the market is actually bullish. We talked about our uh, different opinions uh, on as far as like uh, uh, the SEC and why they will or will not approve. And uh, just took a look at uh, most of the things that, that uh, are going on. So I linked um, the NFA Live in the description below. So check it out because it was a very, it was a very, very positive show. And if you watch the show before that, as far as like a week ago, very, very bullet or very, very bearish, a little bit negative, some might say. So for this one, we just want to remind everybody that, hey, yeah, the market was kind of sucking. And this was, of course, very early in the morning. We didn't see the... Uh, uh, the price action that happened today. Yes, the market's very ugly. Yes, things are, you know, uh, chopping sideways a little bit lower, but good days are on the horizon. And guess what? Those good days are today. Now, just because we're having a little bit of a pump, of course, you guys are all pros. You, if you're here right now, you're not a tourist. So you know what's going to happen. We're going to have a pump. It's going to be great. It's going to go down. And then, of course, the people that are like, you know what? YOLO, I'm going to go long on this, are the ones that get crushed. Maybe I'm wrong this time, but uh, usually we play the odds. It doesn't really happen uh, regardless of what uh, anybody might think. It usually just goes, we have a pump, and then we get a little bit of a dump, and we move sideways for a bit, and that's the beauty of the bear market. So Bitcoin, of course, the total market cap is doing pretty good. 1.1 trillion now. Finally, just grab another uh, you know, $50 billion from somewhere. That's great. Um, there's the big winners for the day, Solana up 4.1, Tuncoin 4.7, which now they just flip flop with Tron and let's see what else, Bitcoin Cash eh, 4.7 and then uh, Lido Dow, great, Kronos, ah, I guess so, 2.9, Arbitrum, one of the ones that was losing and one of the ones that I think is going to do great in the next run, <clears throat> 8.7. So I think that's the, the big winner for the day except for Ave. So congratulations to everybody who has been uh, going into it. If you want to take profits uh, at this point, maybe something to consider. I'm not a financial advisor. You can do whatever you want to. But hey, if you're up like 10% for the day, just saying, not a bad day. And then uh, the question then is why? Well, there's a number of reasons, of course. And of course, really what it comes down to is this. There's more buyers than sellers. That's really what it comes down to. People aren't dumping right now and uh, people aren't maybe not, as not near as afraid in our market. But there was this little piece I thought was pretty interesting as far as the positivity. Coinbase International gets the green light for futures trading. So Coinbase, we covered this months ago, and we talked about how Coinbase was, was branching out because they were kind of stuck in the United States. And of course, we've got this guy named Gary Gensler who just does whatever he wants to. He goes before Congress, they grill the tar out of him, and he's like, that was fun, and now I'm just going to prolong these ETFs. I'm gonna sue everybody, and I'm gonna do whatever I want to. See you on the next time you drag me into Congress suckers. So. This is good. Here's what we got. So this just happened uh, yesterday, I believe, in, an, in, a, in its official announcement. Uh, Coinbase, the crypto exchange, asserted that nearly 75% of the crypto trading volume originates from the derivatives market. And because of their ability to work with the Bermuda Monetary Authority, eh, they have obtained regulatory green lights, bringing the platform to introduce perpetual futures trading options for non-US retail clientele. So that's a pretty big piece of news. I think it's very positive. Maybe uh, this moves out. But if you know, I mean, it's, it says right here, 75% of the crypto trading volume is from the derivatives market. That just opens it up for other people. Now, if they come in the United States, sure. But the more that you put in as far as derivatives and the options they have, the more risk that you put into it. I do not play around with derivatives market. But of course, you're welcome to do whatever you want to do. I think this is good. And having said all that, uh, I think everybody's been talking about, you know, myself included, how awful September is. And just as a quick update, uh, we were at like positive 1.15% for September. And uh, right now we're at 4.46. Now we've got two days to go. So I don't want to jinx it, but uh, things are looking pretty good. And then also just on some, some positive news. I know some people love Solana. Some people despise Solana. But you can't 
go against the fact that it is super fast. This is from Chris. I just saw this little post and it looks like USDC, of course, uh, being on the Solana chain and you're able to move things around. Look, when I use USDC and I got to pay somebody, especially on the Ethereum blockchain for USDC, holy smokes, it's slow and it's expensive. And for this one, it is fast and it is cheap, 0 0.01. I mean, for a penny. And of course you can send whatever you want to, but just look at this, hits confirm and it's there. That's nice. And that's how blockchain should work. Now, I know some people say, well, you know, it's very controlled, it's very centralized and it goes down all the time and it's awful. Look, for this year, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think it's gone down once. And uh, yes, they can say, hey guys, our, uh, the chain is down, could you reboot? <laughs> yes, that is true. But uh, I will say this, Solana, I think, is a little bit more decentralized than your local bank. Tell me where I'm wrong. And uh, lastly, and we'll get into a little q and I want to make this quick because, again, most of the things we talk about, the alpha is right in this, in this show, really good stuff, was um, <clears throat> I talked about this quickly on uh, NFA Live. I did a video about this. It was the 80-20 rule. And really what it came down to is that in 2017, 20% uh, of all the top 53 cryptos that are out there, only 20% went on to hit their all-time highs. And I said, you know, if you want to gamble around, that's fine, but just know that, you know, it's going to be very difficult to hit the all-time highs. And even though you don't hit the all-time highs, here was the all-time lows. And I showed you that even though, like, let's say, like, IOTA. IOTA, for example, it hit its all-time high in 2017 at 5 bucks, And then on their 2021 high, bah, 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 here we go. It was $2.50, so roughly half. It couldn't even hit its all-time high. But it didn't matter because if you looked at this, the lows, you still could have done pretty well. And out of the 53, only two, only two didn't have their all-time lows. And they had, uh, this was uh, Veritasium and uh, Salt. So actually, no, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. You still had their all-time lows. It was just that out of the out of these 53, two didn't have their all-time lows before the Bitcoin halving in 2020. So when I did the 80-20 video, little eye-opening, people say, oh, okay, well, looks like that even if it doesn't hit the all-time highs, maybe I can squeak out some gains. And I wanted to throw this in, but I didn't because it was a long, it was like over 20 minutes, like 25 minutes. And what I wanted to show you real quick is, <clears throat> this is Ben site in the Cryptoverse. Um, this part here is free, the DCA simulation part, just so you know. And uh, I was able to put in XRP, Tron, Stellar, EOS, NEO, IOTA. And those are the ones that didn't hit their all-time high. And I showed you if, well, I'll, I didn't show you. I'm going to show you now. If you put in $10 a week, again, very, very conservative, 10 bucks a week from 2018, because everything either bottomed out, they either bottomed out a year after the high in December 2018 or in uh, March of 2020 during the pandemic, ah, so I just said, okay, if I did 2018, everything was going to, you know, down the tubes and you invested $10 a week into Bitcoin as a, as a, as a uh, point of reference and XRP, Tron, Stellar, EOS, Neo, IOTA, which did not hit their all-time highs, how would you have done? Well, if you'd have done it just dollar cost average, here's the thing, you wouldn't have done too bad. Now, you wouldn't have done better if you would have caught on to like Dogecoin or Polygon or Solana, sure. But if you're just like, you know what, I'm just going to lower my cost basis. Look at this. For Bitcoin, which did hit its all-time high, so it's, again, just on the level. Uh, you had invested $2,000. You would have gotten $14,000. It's pretty good. Tron, then hit its all-time highs. You'd still be up 373%. IOTA, 246%. XRP, 228%. Stellar, 222%, blah, 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 blah. EOS, whopping 24%. Watch out. Um, but the thing was is that this is just dollar cost averaging, just the basic of basic. But if you did, there's another option for you. And one that I talked about just a little bit is as far as like dynamic DCA. So like over here, I'm, not, I'm trying to confuse it, but okay. You put in $10 every week, right? Da -da 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 -da. You go to the very peak and you sell your Bitcoin. It's 14,610. That's what if you, if you do that. If you dynamic DCA, you put in $10 a week and go over here, 
you'd have 72,140. Well, how the heck does that work? It doesn't make any sense. Here's how it is. So dynamic DCA is essentially going into the risk bands. And I talk about this in my video over, you can, you can search for it on, on YouTube. And I talk about when to buy less or more of Bitcoin and crypto. And I talk about dynamic DCA. Basically, it just goes like this. In the risk bands, which you can find on Ben's site, if you see that as, it, as the risks go lower because the price is going lower, less risk, then you put more money into it. The example they give over here would be this, the strategy over time. So as the risk bands go down, meaning the price is going down, instead of putting 10 bucks a week, you put in 20 bucks a week as the price goes down, then 30, then 40, then 50. And some people, this is the part that sucks. It's hard to do this because the price, you're like, what the heck? My portfolio is going down and you want me to put more money in? First of all, I don't want you to do anything. This is just what I do. You can do this. And as you go across this and performance, which I'm doing right now, you would have put more money in as the price plummets. So remember the time when it was like $3,000? Yeah, you're putting more money in. Remember when it was $5,000 for Bitcoin? Yeah, you're putting more money in. And it worked out pretty well as time went on. And he had roughly, what, 4X of what you could have had. So again, you can read about, or read about, you can watch the video itself. You can read over here the questions. At Dan Teaches Crypto, 100% free website. And then also, if you're looking for the things that I use as far as like to my strategy to, to sell and cash out and those type of things. There's a video there as well. Here's the different uh, indicators I use, Pi Cycle Top and UPL, the time and risk band we just talked about, MVRVZ score, TRMA, Puel, and reserve risk. So uh, you can check that out over there or you can search for it one by one on YouTube and that's it. And then also uh, just so you know, like I just discovered this this week. I didn't know this actually existed. So, you know, we're always doing these different charts. We're overlaying stuff and blah, blah, blah. If you want to do these things, there's this part over here. You got your dashboard, your charts, your workbench. You can put in any different type of, of graph and, and lay it over. And you can just, all you got to do is search for it, add a metric. So Bitcoin price, you can put in, well, <laughs> Ben's favorite topic, dominance. And then, of course, you can add another metric. Let's put in the macroverse. Let's put in, I don't know, put in GDP. And then add that. And then, of course, it'll be a little goofy, so you can just kind of zoom in if you want to. And then let's add another metric. Let's put in, like, the, 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 the M2 money supply, my funny, my favorite. And then add this. There's a whole host of things you can do. So you can kind of see where, what the things are going, what's happening. And then every time that you hear about these, you know, the people on the inside or the economists who say this is happening, this is happening. You can take a look at this, overlay it, do a workbench, take a look at like uh, the macro factors and just kind of play around with it and see where things are going. So again, when we talk about do your own research, here's one of those steps. And that's it. Um, lastly, just so you know, most of the stuff I just showed you was free. Some of the things are paid. Ben's having a sale until uh, the end of the month. So you got two days. And then... Lastly, 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 I swear this is the last piece. Uh, there's something going on with Ripple. And I don't know what it is, but I hear from insiders, which they don't, they're all guessing anyhow. But there's a NYC party going on right now that's hosted by Ripple. And they're going to announce something big. And we don't know if it's something that has to do with the SEC in the court case. We don't know if there's something else going on or if they're going to talk about their IPO, them going public. And I know some people will say, well, Rob, the SEC will never let them go public because that's just, they're already suing them for other parts. Yes, but that's a different part of the business. So just remember that uh, the SEC at one point, uh, they allowed Coinbase to go public, so it can happen. But if that does happen, things will be quite exciting. If you so choose to, and I'm actually looking at this myself, there was um, a discussion we had with a company called Link2. And they were able to talk about how you can invest into um, some places like, like Circle and Masari and uh, one of them being Ripple, even though they weren't public. And you can actually invest in them before they go public. Look, if you know anything about investing before th things go public, first of all, it's super risky. So again, not financial advisor. 
but with no risk, there's no reward. But they talked about how you can invest into Ripple before it goes public, and they are regulated by the SEC linked to. There's a link in the description. You can watch the video. The problem was you had to be a credit investor, which means you had to make a return of 50000 And that's, that's just for Americans. Uh, globally, it doesn't, doesn't count. However, good news, uh, you can now potentially invest into Ripple being a non-accredited investor. So again, I linked uh, link to in the description. You can check it out. I'm going to talk to them today about it. We'll see how it goes, but just an option, and you can pass on it. It's all on it. And that's it. So look, thanks so much, everybody, for stopping by. Uh, I wanted to make that fast, but uh, I really didn't. But that was it. So thanks so much, everybody. Like and subscribe.